Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to define a model in RAM concept. In this video, we are going to be focusing on modeling your structure geometry. In RAM concept, you can create single story models and define columns and walls above and below the slab. Supports above the slab do not provide vertical support, only horizontal support and bending resistance. In this video, we are going to be focusing on modeling our horizontal slab elements. So we'll be modeling concrete beams, slabs, drop caps, and slab openings. We're going to start by modeling our beams. Just as the other elements that we created where we had to define our properties first, we're going to define our concrete beam properties by double clicking on the beam tool within our layer specific tools. Here we can enter the concrete mix that we would like to use our thickness and width of the beam, and also our surface elevation. For this model, I'm going to set my top of beam and my top of slab at an elevation of zero inches. Lastly, we have the option to mesh it as a slab. I'm going to go ahead and model this member as a beam instead. Next, we're going to select our behavior tab. Here we can specify the behavior of our members. If we select standard, then the beam will be isotropic and behave the same way in all directions. Next, we could have the no, no torsion, which means the beam will behave like a two-way slab, except that it only has minimal torsional stiffness. Or we can specify the custom option, where all the stiffnesses can be specified by you. We'll go ahead and select the standard option for this exercise. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK and we're ready to start modeling our beams. Again, we can use any of our snap tools in order to locate these members accurately, and we can also zoom in and out as required. Now I'm gonna model my 24 by 24 inch beams along grid lines four, five, and six. Whenever modeling any type of beam elements, you wanna model it from the outside of support to the outside of support. So I'm gonna click on the edge of slab outside grid line four, the far end of the column, and then I'm going to again click on the far end of the column that supports it at the end. Now there is no need to select the interior column since that column is already modeled. The stiffness and the support will be considered during the analysis. I'm going to repeat this process along grid lines 5 and 6. Now in addition to that, I also want to model a, a concrete beam between grid lines 4 and six, but this beam is a different size than my previous members that I just created. To redefine the properties, I'm just gonna simply double click on the layout beam tool, and I can change the thickness or any of the other parameters. Again, I want to model it from outside of support to outside of support. Now, since we modeled these members as beams, we are going to see that we have two beams that overlap. In these situations, RAM concept will consider the deeper beam to govern at those locations where they're intersecting when it goes ahead and performs a finite element mesh. The next type of element we're going to define is our slab elements. Over in our layer specifics toolbar, we're going to start by defining the slab properties by double clicking on the slab area icon. Here we can enter our concrete mix information the thickness of our slab, and the surface elevation. We're going to specify our main slab to be 12 inches thick with a surface elevation of 0 inches. The final parameter we get is the priority parameter. When two objects overlap, the object with a higher priority will govern at that location when the mesh is generated in RAM concept. We're going to set the priority of our main slab to be a priority of one, and then any slab that overlaps that area, such as a slab depression or a drop cap, will have a higher priority. Next, we're going to select the behavior tab, and we're going to define the behavior of our slab system as a two-way slab, which means that the slab is isotropic and will behave in the same manners in all directions. You can also, using this pull-down menu, specify a one-way slab, a no-torsion two-way slab, or also a custom slab. Once we're done entering all of our properties, we're going to click OK, and then we're going to draw a polygon around the perimeter of our area to represent our slab. 
We're going to start in the upper left corner, and again, we can zoom in if it makes it easier. And using our snap to intersection icon, we're going to start drawing our polygon around the slab. If you accidentally clicked a point that you didn't mean to, you can right click and say cancel last point instead of redrawing your entire polygon. If you want to cancel all of your points, you can also right click and hit cancel all, which will erase your polygon so far. Once you're done, you need to form a closed polygon. So once you click back at the point that you started on, the polygon will close itself. Now, if you have anything else within your slab, such as a thickened area slab or slab depression, you can redefine your slab properties. Here, I'm gonna double click on my slab area again, and I'm gonna specify for a slab depression. My depression will be 10 inches thick, and this time I'm gonna give it a surface elevation of negative two inches. This means that the bottom of the slab depression will match the bottom of your typical main slab, and the top will be set down by two inches. Once we're done, we can click, we can enter our priority of two. Remember the priority needs to be higher. If you do have two slab areas that are set at the same priority, you will receive an error when it goes to either generate the mesh or perform the calculation. And here we can just click along our areas. Again, forming a closed polygon. If we want to see the font any larger, we can click on our enlarge fonts icon to see where our priorities are sitting. Now, in addition to my main slab areas for this particular model, I also have a couple of drop caps. Now I could model these as slab areas, but I also do have a drop cap tool, which might make the modeling a little easier. If I take a look at my slab area icon, I'm gonna notice that I have a little black triangle in the lower right-hand corner. If I hold down my left mouse button on that icon, I will find a drop cap tool available. If I release my left mouse button on that tool, it'll bring it to the top. I'm gonna now double click on the drop cap icon and I'm gonna see the same slab properties that I defined before. This time I'm gonna specify a thickness of 18 inches and a surface elevation of zero. This will represent the properties of my drop cap. I can set the priority of two, although if it overlaps my slab depressions, that will provide a problem later on. So I'm gonna specify my problem, my priority to three. Once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and now I'm ready to start modeling. Now the way the drop cap tool works is instead of clicking along the perimeter, you would just click at the center line location of your drop cap, and then you can define the size of your drop cap. I'm gonna specify an eight foot by eight foot drop cap, square with an angle of zero degrees. I'm gonna repeat this process for the other drop cap in my model. This last type of slab object we can create is a slab opening. The slab opening doesn't have any required parameters. I can just simply do a symbol, single click and then model a slab opening. Now automatically it's gonna be given a very high priority so that it will govern at the locations where the slab is. Once you are done creating all of your slab objects, your concrete beams, and also your support elements, you are ready to generate your finite element mesh. We're gonna to navigate to our finite element, element mesh layer now by clicking on our layers menu bar item, select element followed by standard plan. Now all of the objects that are created on the mesh input layer will be used as candidates for generating the finite element mesh on this plan. To generate your element, finite element mesh automatically, we're gonna go up to our standard toolbar and click on our generate mesh icon. We're gonna specify our optimum element size and then we'll click generate. And we're gonna see that our finite element mesh was created. We're gonna see the outlines of our concrete beams, also where our columns and walls are located. And you can even see that the 
finite element mesh was broken around where our slab depressions and drop caps are located. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.